what I'm going to start recording now, and what I want to talk about are some of the nine noble virtues, because uh, it's like some things people get into them and they get them first couple. They think they got them first couple doing pretty good, and then, uh, but then they kind of drift off towards the end. <laughs> um, and where they came from is is is. You know, everybody talks about it, but they talk about courage is the first one. And then, you know, you can talk a lot about courage. You know, you have the courage to be honest with yourself, I guess, first and foremost. Um, everybody likes to sidestep that, talk about, well, I've got the courage to get in a fight. I've got the courage to be a man and stand up and knuckle up with someone. That's kind of a limited expression. And um, while it has its place, Maybe not so much today in today's world, though with this coronavirus, it might be changing. But the, uh, the courage to be honest with yourself is a real important characteristic that we need to cultivate. And there's truth, and truth is, uh, truth is one of those real interesting things. It's kind of subjective, and that uh, one man's truth is another man's, you know, lie. You know, I see six, you see nine. So what is the truth? You can get lost in that one right there. Honesty is a pretty good substitute for that because that's what we really got to go to. We got to be honest with ourselves about exactly what we're doing. We have to be honest about our expectations of what we're talking about. What are we looking for here? And there's honor. Honor is uh, an interesting characteristic because I see people talk all the time about, well, I have honor. Well, says who? Who gave you that honor? Did you graduate with honors? Did you earn a degree with honors? Um, did someone say that's an honorable woman because of her behavior? Did someone say you're an honorable man because of the way you act? Did you, or did you just give yourself honor because you walk around with your head in the air? See, honor is uh, one of those interesting virtues that uh, is given to you by someone else based on your actions, your example you set. Um, if you're walking around honoring yourself, you might go back to steps one and two with courage and truth and honest, that honesty thing. <clears throat> Fidelity, you know, we got to be, we got to be loyal. We got to stick by our people. We got to stick by those people that love us and people that we love. There's a lot more to that too. I'm kind of skimming over these because there's a couple I want to get to that are important in this day and age. Discipline. Discipline is important. <clears throat> you know, there's a whole multi-billion dollar industry of masculinity trying to instill discipline in men that heretofore may have been lacking in such a quality or characteristic. Um, it's easy to get out of bed at 4.30 in the morning when the drill sergeant turn on the light. You know, you better get out of bed. Um, but to get up at 4.30 in the morning and not negotiate with yourself about why you should hit that snooze one for another 10 minutes. Well, that's a whole different thing. I really don't care. I don't need to do this, blah, blah, blah. Well, yes, you do need to do it. You need to have the discipline to get up and go to work and pay your bills and all that good nonsense. That's part of living in the world we live in. Much as a lot of people would like to change it right now until you, unless you show the discipline to keep working at it, you're not going to be able to have the money to make those kinds of things necessary. Hospitality is a, beautiful sentiment of love. I think um, if you have what it takes to offer hospitality to just anyone that comes along, there's a lot of confidence that comes with that. It means you've taken care of some, you've had some discipline and you've, you have uh, plenty of food and you have plenty to offer and you're confident in who you are. and You're not worried somebody's going to take something from you because there's a lot of people in this world right now that live with the idea that if I let that person near my house, they're going to take something from me. Now, if they're a junkie, they probably will. They will take some shit from you. That's just the way they are. Now, hospitality kind of stems from the idea that at one time you didn't know if it was Odin knocking on your door or not. Or it could have been a special woman of magic. Who knows? <clears throat> so you showed hospitality. That is a hallmark of brave, confident, successful individuals. Not small-minded, petty, poverty-stricken pieces of trash. You don't see much hospitality down there in the poor parts of town. Well, you won't. Why are you in here? Now, number seven, the 
the reason we're getting into this is self-reliance. Self-reliance, industriousness, and perseverance. Well, now, what exactly does self-reliance mean? This has been a pet peeve of mine for a long time, self-reliance. Um, and given the events of the last couple of days with the coronavirus, loud and proud and running around the world, and, and, this, and the demonstration that people are herd animals buying toilet paper, all of the toilet paper, It's a real glaring hallmark or idea that maybe all these people that thought they was going to be ready for the end of the world, maybe they weren't. One of the reasons we're as comfortable as we are is because we have sacrificed our self-reliance to someone else. And by that, I'm talking about all the comforts of home that we enjoy. Conditioned air, light bulbs, running water, all that food, we can go to the store and buy all the food we want. We have continually allowed other people to make a profit off of the idea that, well, if I don't have to do that, I can spend more time making money. We got sucked into um, some idea of trading our time for someone else's dollars, and then we'll be able to pay for all these things that we want, and then we'll be comfortable instead of the other way around. Well, one of the things about technology is that it's allowing new doorways to open. Now, a lot of people know that I am a big advocate of solar. And I always hear some, some Yahoo want to say, well, solar can't possibly power the, industri the, the energy needs of the heavy industrial complex. Well, I didn't say get rid of the power plants. I said take care of solar. <laughs> I watched a deal today on Seattle. They built a, they built a uh, skyscraper up there. And they pointed out the skyscrapers are one of the most wasteful, use, uh, wasteful consumers of resources we have, from water to electricity to just about everything, the way we process waste, the way we utilize water, the way we use electricity. So somebody in Seattle decided I'm gonna build a skyscraper and make it, uh, make it right. So they installed solar panels on the roof in Seattle. And they installed enough of them that it generates 40% more electricity than the building needs. So now they're selling it. That's a pretty interesting thing. They, um, put holes in between the solar panels so that they can harvest the rainwater. It goes down to the basement, all of the rainwater is recycled, harvest is recycled and returned into use in the, in the drinking fountains, in the washing machines, in the showers, all of it is water that they collect from their roof. See, that's self-reliance. Now, their waste system, they have a way of processing their waste uh, and turning it into fertilizer. They do it in Korea, but it stinks terribly. I've seen it, smelled it too. <clears throat> so when I'm talking about self-reliance, a lot of people want to uh, talk about raising a garden, which I think is a good thing. Raise a garden, do a little hunting, do a little fishing, put that food in the freezer. Take care of one aspect of your well-being, of your existence on this earth, instead of letting someone else be responsible for all of your creature comforts. And that's kind of self-reliance. But here's another thing. What if you were, were to take responsibility for the energy you consume? Well, there's a couple things that might come out of that. Number one, we would uh, steal away from all of these Greenpeace individuals and tree huggers and whatnot, um, the ability to create fear, like this carbon tax and carbon tax credits and all this nonsense people keep throwing at us because it's going to save the planet and save the atmosphere and the faulty climate science that they keep pushing down our throats. Well, why don't we just take responsibility for our energy? Let's put solar on our homes. Put a little windmill up if you need to. Buy a battery wall. Yes, it takes money. It takes a lot of money. Fortunately, it's heavily subsidized still. <laughs> but didn't we get ourselves in this boat? waiting on somebody else to provide the electricity for our homes? Well, shouldn't, doesn't it stand to reason that we might need to make a little bit of a sacrifice to get on top of that and become self-reliant and generate our own electricity? Let's imagine for one instant that all of the government buildings um, decided that we're not gonna fleece the taxpayer anymore for money to pay for the electric bill so our offices can be comfortably heated and aired. 
so that we can have electricity. Let's say they put solar on top of every government building and they all became uh, net positive energy producers. What kind of effect might that have? Let's take it and make it simpler. Let's say I go to a church and let's say I convince the church to go solar so the preacher can save more money because every Sunday a preacher is going to get up there and he's going to talk about a thousand dollar seat of faith donation. And if you can't give that thousand dollar seat of faith donation, it's going to be very hard for you to understand what it means to receive the blessings of the Lord, press down, shaken together, return to you overflowing. Right? Now, if they're not having to pay an electric bill by that thousand dollar seat of faith goes that much further for that preacher, doesn't it? Then the people that go to that church are going to figure out, Hey, Maybe I should do that. Maybe I could say, well, my electric bill, maybe instead of paying $200 a month in electricity, I can pay 50, which is typically the finance charge for your average 2000 square foot home that wants to go solar and be energy neutral. About a $50 a month payment, you get it financed, all right? Well, now all of a sudden that electric company that's been burning the shit out of coal and natural gas and pumping this atmosphere full of all of those chemicals that, well, that's just the stuff the clouds are made out of. Um, now they're not having to work as hard. That makes a difference. Self-reliance is a big thing to me. Solar is just a, one small part of it. See, because when I look at all of these people that are rushing out just to buy toilet paper, I see, uh, I see that mob mentality of people that, Man, they just ain't quite ready for it. They just ain't quite ready for the way the world's going to change. Tesla is making these electric cars. Whether we like it or not, this world is going to change. And we're either going to continue to keep paying higher prices for the people that no longer purchase the way they used to, or we're going to become self-reliant in our own aspect. See, if you go to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every one of those people probably didn't see them, the serious adherence to it, rushing out to buy water or toilet paper because every one of them as a part of their faith and way of life have a setup that will keep them alive. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. It could simply be a tornado, an earthquake, or a forest fire. But they're self-reliant. <laughs> we have it right here in our nine noble virtues and so many of us are just struggling to pay the bills that the idea of becoming self-reliant is just a hurdle we can't seem to overcome. Might we not ought to be committing to that idea a little bit more seriously? What will it take for me to cut that bill out? What will it take for me to quit relying on someone else for my comfort? There's a number of ways to do it. There's all kinds of ways to do it. People will say, well, they're not exactly energy. They're not exactly efficient. They, they don't, they don't generate as much electricity as you think. And hey, Canada's got a solar panel now that collects 98% of the sunlight it, 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 is, it, it faces and generates electricity from it. It's just one aspect of what it is. Our water, we rely on someone else for our water. Think about that. We don't, I don't have to walk to that lake back there and get a bucket and bring my water back and clear, purify it. But that person that we rely on fills that water with chemicals, fluoride and chlorine and all these agents to make it clean so it's potable and we can drink it, take a bath with it. Sometimes it smells funny and sometimes it gets contaminated, but you know, it's still, it's water, it's convenient, it's easy. Um, the harvesting of rainwater is a legitimate thing. Now out west there's water rights and all that other stuff, but the, the neatest way around that is called a land patent. That's where you file a legal document that removes everyone in the abstract between you and the treaty with which the U.S. government purchased that property. That means you're outside of their jurisdiction. You remove yourself from that jurisdiction, and you have the right to do that. Then you can harvest rainwater all you fucking want. A 2,000-square-foot roof. No, a 1,250-square-foot roof will generate 2,000 gallons of fresh water with one inch of rainfall. Think about that. So literally everything we need, if you want to poop, you can figure out how to poop cleanly, you know, on a good night. That's not, I'm not going to get into talking about processing poop. <laughs> but 
Everything we need is already present. And yet for the sake of comfort and easy living, we're going to ignore it. Self-reliance becomes, I'll work a job. It'll go into industriousness and I'll stay busy and make some money and perseverance. And, well, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to hang in there and I'm going to keep my nose, my nose down and stiff upper lip and one foot in front of the other and keep trying and keep paying them bills. And we lose track of what we're doing to begin with. We get suckered into the rat race that all of us are trying to separate ourselves from. See, self-reliance is the key to that kind of freedom that I think many of us are looking for. We've got a small taste of it with this spirituality. Now it's time to take a real hard look at it with how we live in this world. Self-reliance is that key that allows us to step out of the mold and be who we want to be. See, if you're running a business and your profit margin is only 5%, you cut your expenses 5%, now you have a 10% profit margin. Now you've doubled your profits. Not hard to figure out. <laughs> and yet in our personal lives, we come home, we work, we're exhausted. Many of us work out, exercise, spend time with the family, talk to each other on the phone, read, do whatever we do. Not many of us watch much TV, but we will watch these silly things. But when it comes to talking about making a sacrifice, that becomes a problem. There's a lot of people that will give you plenty of excuses of why that doesn't make sense and that won't work and that's ridiculous. Fine, they don't have to do it. But if you want to step forward into something and become a little bit something more and maybe have a little bit more of that spare change that we're all looking for, um, instead of getting a spare job, how about we cut some expenses? How about, yeah, let's make that sacrifice. See, like I said earlier, if I go to the church and make a thousand dollar seed of faith donation, Nobody says a word. Nobody, everybody looks at you, you're passing that along the front row, passing that basket along the front row and put that check in there. Make sure everybody can see that you put that $1,000 seat of faith. You're a member of the church. You important. But if I'm self-reliant, for so long it has, it has had the perspective of someone that's roughing it. But if you look at technology today, um, we don't have to rough it. We've got enough technology laying around right now at our fingertips, albeit there is a price to it, but that's something we might need to figure out how to negotiate with, or how to navigate. There is a way for us to be self-reliant. And looking at the way people ran through all of the Walmarts and Costco's and Target's and, and bought all of the toilet paper, um, maybe we need to start taking a real good look at that because even the hint of the end of the world threw people into a herd mob mentality that decimated the shelves of every local shopping center in the, in, in the United States. And see, I, I, I don't get that. See, I've got, there's a toilet paper factory down here in Jinx. So there's another one down here in Muskogee. <coughs> there's trucks leaving there all day long. There's rolls of toilet paper big around as your living room. They move around on forklifts and they're stacked five high to the ceiling and they'll break them all down. They'll roll them all up. They'll send them all out. And there's toilet paper for days. We don't live in a place that gets all of its toilet paper imported like Australia. <clears throat> I mean, if that's your greatest fear with regards to the end of the world that you might not be able to wipe your butt, <laughs> you got bigger problems than trying to figure out how to be self-reliant. I mean, come on but people were getting in fist fights over that. Look, we have a real, probably a real situation on our hands with this. We need to, some of us are gonna make it through it. There's gonna be some people die. We need to start paying attention to what self-reliance means. It doesn't mean just working all day to get a paycheck. It means stopping depending on someone else for the comfort we expect to live in. Like I said, for so long, it had the aspect of, well, they're roughing it. They're living that rough life. They're roughing it. You know, they're out there gardening and all that stuff. And it ain't like when grandma and grandpa had to go out there and, and kill a chicken or slaughter a cow and, and get a side of beef. <laughs> I mean, my Uncle Sonny always said about his dairy farm, all them cows out there, he said, that's money on the hoof, Brian. Little did I know that it was going to have such an impact on my future. When I started figuring out what Fehu really means, mobile wealth, money on the hoof, that's your self-reliance but we get packaged into prefabbed homes 
in little communities uh, with neighbors and we try to figure out how to get along with the neighbors and the neighbors bratty kids and all this other nonsense. And we're one paycheck, most heathens are one paycheck away from getting the electric shut off or the water turned off or having some kind of disruption of service. Let's say somebody hits a telephone pole or a tornado goes through your community a mile away and you're out of power for two days or an ice storm hits and the power is out for two weeks. And then um, you got to find somebody that has a fireplace and hope they let you in. See, that's not self-reliant. So we want to start talking about living an awesome true life. Maybe we need to stop talking about giving ourselves honor and start talking about, well, I planted a garden by the moon using the farmer's almanac. I'll have all this extra vegetables. Maybe I'll truck, maybe I'll sell it out of the back of my truck and maybe I'll can a bunch of it and I'll have food for all winter long. <laughs> I mean, this is, we have technology now that will allow us to embrace our ancestral wisdom, how to farm and can and, and, and stock food and prepare for all this stuff. The generation that remembers the Great Depression is largely gone. So they took with them some very important lessons that all of a sudden our gods have thrown us once again another lifeline of how to make it through some of these tough times. We even got the hint of a tough time. People lost their fucking minds. So let's take a look at self-reliance. Let's start considering, hey, maybe I could afford to put a solar panel on my home right now. Maybe next year I could put another one. Maybe next year I could put two or three. Start cutting my bills a little bit. Hey, maybe next year I could figure out how to harvest the rainwater from my, from my gutters and purify it. Maybe I could spend a couple thousand dollars and get started on that facility. And then eventually I could put it all together. Or maybe I could drill a well. You can buy all the stuff to drill a well at Lowe's. Make it an underground cistern, whoever, however you want to do it. <clears throat> but we, we put ourselves in a serious predicament if we want to be independent-minded heathens when we continue to rely upon others for the comfort of how we live. So how should I, how serious should I take somebody's um, ideas about what it means to be independent or have honor or be courage or be industrious? When I take a real close look and I see that just about everything they have, every success, every benefit, every comfort that they enjoy comes from someone else. We live most of our lives by the permission of someone else, most likely a bureaucrat that has no interest in whether or not we live, die, succeed, or fail. So when I'm talking about self-reliance, I'm talking about finding a way to be free. And all of us want to talk about that. But unlike church, where it's common to give the most you can give to do the good work of the Lord, when it comes to investing in ourselves, we're awfully tight. Oh, we'll buy a horn and a hammer. We'll join a Facebook group and call ourselves a heathen. But when it comes time to really make some of those ideas come to fruition, well, I just can't, right? Okay, let's put a plan together as to how you can. Maybe one of the best aspects of a tribal setup is that the tribe could contribute to each member so that they're free and then they're free and then they're free and then they're free and go around the whole thing. There she is. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so when I say talk about self-reliance and I'm talking about freedom, I'm talking about being free from the nonsense of everything we rely on for someone else for us to be comfortable. This is what I'm talking about. Figuring out how to make that sacrifice, just like you're in church, to make sure that at least one of y'all has what they need to make it past the end of the damn world. Because right now, we're not looking so hot. All of us together are not doing so good. You know, if you can't go to the store and buy water or toilet paper, there's a real issue with that. What are you going to do if something bad really does happen? So when I say take a look at putting solar on your home, when I say take a look at finding a way to harvest your rainwater, when I say file a land patent and, and separate yourself from the community you live in so you can do these things legally, I'm talking about the idea of, for one, you're going to save money in the long run. For 
two, you're going to have the ability not to worry about whether or not the power is out a block over or whether or not somebody poured some kind of poison in the water supply, like fluoride. See, all these things are things we, we take for granted. We grew up in that comfortable society. For us. Ever since we've been children, it's been easy to go get a drink of water. It's been easy to have a, a good meal. It's been easy to uh, have just about anything we want, a roof over our head. And we've taken it for granted. And we've, lost, I, we've lost real connection with the idea of what it means to be self-reliant. And when, when people just keep it with the simple idea of, well, my bills are paid, well, we're losing touch of what it really talks about. We're losing touch with what it really means to be self-reliant. Self-reliant means I'm relying on myself for my own well-being in this world. And if I'm relying on someone else for my water, my food, my electricity, that doesn't mean I'm self-reliant. It means I can simply pay the bill. That's a good place to start. I'm not knocking that. Don't think that I am. But let's take it a step further. Because like I said, we're, we're at the whim of a bureaucrat who may decide, well, you're not allowed to do that. You don't need anybody being free out here. You must do this. And I don't mean some kind of trashy nonsense either. I've seen some people try to do this and it looked like absolute junk in the neighborhood. Do it right. Just spend the money. Get, you know, do what you need to do. Either borrow it, work with the tribe, build it what you need to build. <laughs> but whether we like it or not, our world is changing. Our world is changing radically. As we, in my lifetime, in our lifetimes, the world has changed in ways we couldn't begin to imagine 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago. And now look at it. And all I'm saying is, is that the technology is there. The infrastructure is there that will allow us to purchase what we need to become self-reliant. Let's start looking at some of that because if we don't start looking at some of that, we will find ourselves with our hand out in the bread line like so many other people in so many other countries or fighting some buffoon over a roll of toilet paper. Good night, if you, if you bust that dirty, I don't, I ain't got nothing for you. You know, I probably can't help you. I think that's all I wanted to talk about with the self-reliance. It's, uh, it's time probably to take it to the next step. It's time to take it to the next level. Not simply just being able to pay your bills. Good, that's a good place to start. Now let's take it one step further. And let's be energy independent. Let's be, uh, let's, let's, let's lessen our dependence on the bureaucracy of the municipality we live in. Because like I said, those people couldn't care if we lived or died give them a chance to call us a witch or a little bit off or odd or dangerous and they'll slander our names in a heartbeat and we lose it all. Self-reliance insulates us from that, that kind of nonsense. And being industriousness, that industriousness is a part of it because you're going to have to work hard to make that a reality. You're going to have to stick with it through perseverance to ensure that this idea that you have is worth it. What's it going to look like? What am I going to look like? What would it look like if you didn't have to pay $300 in bills every month? What could you do with that money? Let's say you didn't have, let's say you cut your food bill in half with your own garden. Let's say you, you limit, you rid yourself of a $200 a month electric bill. Let's say you rid yourself of a hundred dollar a month uh, water bill. What, how, what could you do with that extra money every month? What would your life look like if you could set that money aside every day or every month for the rest of your life till you wanted to retire? What would it look like? That's self-reliance. That means you don't have to depend on anybody for the comforts that you like to enjoy. <laughs> Technology is here. It's possible. And your life can change dramatically. So we've taken this wild ass jump off to the left or to the right or however you want to perceive it to change the foundation of our spiritual being. And we're beginning to notice some other things. And yet we're terrified to really go against the grain and be reliant upon ourselves. In fact, much of the opposite has occurred with some segments of heathen rare, or or whatever you want to call it. And they've gone the opposite route saying, well, the government will take care of everything. If we have a socialized this or a socialized that, everything will be fine and I won't have to take responsibility. That's the antithesis of self-reliance. And yet I see it applauded daily. The government will do. Every time we have sacrificed 
some aspect of our ability to be free for comfort, for safety, for security, it has cost us dearly to the point now we can't even hardly recognize it. Our government is shutting this whole nation down. They've shut down Italy, they've shut down, they're gonna continue and in two weeks time, what we've considered to be a free society, we may not recognize it if it gets out of control. If it doesn't get out of control, then they'll say everything worked, everything came out fine, we saved the world, we shut it all down, we've had a test run, now what? See, if you can't work for two weeks, are you gonna be able to pay that electric bill? If you can't work for two weeks, are you gonna be able to pay that water bill? If you can't work for two weeks, are you gonna be able to buy groceries? I know lots of heathens that cannot. I know lots of ossatures who are going to be in a real bad bind. But they failed to enlarge upon the idea of self-reliance being anything more than just being able to pay the bills. See, when I ran Nana's Hearth and handed out food and money and everything else to all of these people, it's now AFA Folk Services. But <laughs> when I started that, you'd be amazed at how many of heathens that are out there right now, many of them struggling with addictions, but their kids are eating nothing more than ramen. $20 goes a long way to somebody like that. The inability to collect $20, um, goes just doubles negatively. Now, they might get high, but their kids ain't gonna eat. We got some real serious issues to look at. These kind of things need to be, we need to be have the courage and the honesty to take a good, long, hard look at them and figure out, ooh, maybe I'm not quite in the position I wanted to be. Maybe this ain't quite what I thought it should be. Maybe, um, see, I know one guy that's done it, I know a couple of guys that have done it. You know, some people that go hide in the Arkansas foothills, they don't have to worry about nothing. But for the most part, those of us living in cities and stuff like that, we're going to have some issues to deal with. It is time to take this a step further. Just like our faith, just like our spirituality, it's time to take it beyond the ideas of trying to define what it is and begin implementing it so we might become better people. Now let's see what happens if we become truly free. See, that cat likes me. That's why it's in the, in the way. <laughs> All right, that's, that's my rant. That's my soapbox. I'm done. It's getting chilly out here and dark. Hey, I just want to tell you something. Go for it. We're talking about that solar. A lot of states have programs. Missouri is one of them where, um, because I've already had people come over to look at my house for solar. And yeah. there's no money down. If you own your house, you don't have to pay the $20,000 to put solar on your house. You just pay your monthly thing. And the monthly payment for mine, I have a 2,750 square foot house. And if my monthly payment is less than what my um, utility bill would be. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. Yeah. So Man, just so you know. Some people think that it's a big thing, like they're going to have to come up with $20,000 out of their pocket right away, but you don't. Can y'all hear them coyotes over there? No, they killed some. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of states that are that way. But, you know, when I saw them building a, an entire skyscraper in Seattle that was an energy net positive that radically altered the way it even gets rid of waste, that didn't use any VOC paint that used a, a, it was called a Lotus on paint and it would, uh, it would completely repel water and stains. It was amazing. Um, they built it completely environmentally friendly. I mean, they, you know, usually when you go into a new building, you smell all that new building smell. Well, they use a lot of times that's chemicals that cause cancer. They may not necessarily be good for you. They built an entire building without that stuff. It was an amazing structure. Um, from the coating on the wire, to the way they did the plumbing, to the, to the solar on the roof, which was amazing to me that a skyscraper in Seattle would, be, would produce 40% more electricity than it needed to run the building. So like I say, you have LED lights you have, that are bright as all get out. The, the schools that I'm working in now that I'm building, they're using 
LED lights. They're using a fraction of the amount of electricity they used to. If they put solar on the roof, they'd be energy neutral. And the school district would have an a huge amount of additional funds to take care of these students the way everybody expected them to. But that's also a part of self-reliance. Why are we letting a school that does not care whether we win, lose, or draw raise our children and educate our kids? And that's a tough one to deal with because that's that's what comes next. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could homeschool Scarlett. I got to figure that out. So what's my best alternative? There are actually people that you can hire to homeschool your kids. I know a lady that does it. She was a licensed psychologist. And, oh, uh, no, I don't want, I don't want, I don't, I don't want no licensed psychologist in my home. They'd be taking my inventory and I'd fail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like, you know, she's, she was a smart woman, but there's good people out there that are <laughs> educated that can host cool kids really well. So she come in my, <laughs> Brian, why do you have that skull on the wall? What's that huge spear doing <laughs> over there? Is it the, really safe around a child? <laughs> <laughs> a place called, uh, what was it, Epic Charter Schools? Yeah. They have online classes and uh, they'll send you a computer. Oh, yeah. They pay for your Wi-Fi. Yeah, and they, uh, my wife says they even pay for your Wi-Fi. See, there you go. That's the way to do it, man. This is where I think community is really important because you can rely on each other. You know, I'm watching, like, the, the groups around me, the, the moms, the schools, and they're all working together to take care of the kids for the next couple weeks. Um, that's stuff that we should be doing as a community to help each other raise our, our children, you know. It is. Idea. It exactly sure. is something we should be doing. Your Christian-based homeschooling programs run like that. Like, they have, they'll meet up and their kids get to hang out, but not just hang out. The parents take turns teaching different subjects to those kids so that the education doesn't rely all on one parent for every <laughs> educational need that they have, which is pretty awesome. Those are the kind of things we need to start looking at as a community, as a, as this, as this, you know, I saw something the other day about neo-paganism becoming the new religion of America. Um, it's real possible. I mean, it's going to come, you know, these kind of things we're talking about do change the world. I mean, like I said, if every government building decided to put solar on their, on their roofs and, and limit the amount of money they fleece from the public for, to pay their electric bill, that would change things in a heartbeat. I mean, things would change. We wouldn't be faced with all of these nonsensical laws that are coming at us. But it's very hard to expect the government to lead the way with regards to self-reliance. We're never going to do it. It's up to us to do it. It's up. I mean, these are these are the kind of things that change the world. If you go look at Phoenix and the number of solar panels, there's one guy down there. He's got. He's got five air conditioners on his house. He's covered it in solar panels. He don't pay an electric bill anymore. That's an important thing to consider. <laughs> Five hundred dollars a month makes a big difference in a lot of people's lives. But but you're right. I mean the the community, the tribes, the various organizations and groups that we get together with, we need to start working towards ensuring that. And that's the problem, you know, is sometimes you do something for somebody and they just kind of flake out and disappear. Um, and it's a risk, you know, nobody wants to look stupid or there's some guy running a scam or a hustle and you know, we, nobody wants to be suckered. But, you know, there's, there's some people that at some point we got to start taking a risk. Okay. So what? We did it. And that's, that's hard to do because everybody wants to look important. Everybody wants their ego to be, we did this for them and they're standing beside us and they owe us something. And that there's some growth that has to involve in the communities before we can start doing that. But it, it's really necessary we start doing that. It's really necessary we start taking care of each other in more than just, in just the superficial of ways. Let's help somebody become something more. I mean, that's, that's at the root of just about everything we want to do to make ourselves um, something better. Uh, just taking, giving a shit about somebody else's welfare and being, yeah. help them, be, help them. And we're, and I think there's a, there's a lot of time we're afraid to do it because, well, they may not, they may not act the way I think they ought to act. They may not be as grateful as I, I think they ought to be grateful. They, they may not, 
give up their entire Sunday because I want to do this and take it away from their family. Um, yeah, th those traditional skills like blacksmithing, carpentry, livestock husbandry, all of that stuff, those are essential to us becoming something more. You know, that's, um, those are all good skills to have. Those are all real good skills to have. But, but we need to, uh, we need to take a look at what comes next with self-reliance other than just being able to pay the bills. And in two weeks time, we're really going to be paying attention to it. Or we could be, we could be all gone. We could just be, could be nothing. Who knows? But those people that aren't, don't understand what it means to be relying upon self, they're going to be suffering here pretty shortly, especially if they get quarantined for two weeks. There will be no money for them. There'll be money for the businesses that lose their economic impact. But your average Joe, you ain't going to get shit. It's going to have to come from people like us. Communities trying to take care of each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's your freedom. Anybody got any questions? I'm looking at this stupid article, and it said one of the one of the damn references was rocking for Satan. Maybe I'm doing <laughs> the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! Come on, God damn! You see the what? Line, really silly stuff. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tomorrow we got Monday, another big day. Let's grab life by the nose and whip its ass. And uh, I know this wasn't a message of faith and empowerment this evening, but it is something to think about so that when you're out there working and sweating your ass off and hating what you're doing, um, if you didn't have to pay an electric bill, you might not have to do it. Something to think about. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This, look at this. See that sage? That is the most wonderful smelling stuff you'll ever find. <laughs> some California white sage. <laughs> this is damn right, man. That's some awesome stuff. God, I've been burning it the whole time. I took a trash bag of it last time I was out there, and I've just Did been you? out. Did oh. you? Yeah, and I've just been out. I'm just, it just sucked. <laughs> I'm always abundant in uh, sage. Right. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, process this special feature and uh, rub it in the nose of everyone and make fun of everybody else that's not me. And uh... So I'm at the uh, Walmart in uh, Sand Springs, Arkansas, and this is the bread aisle. Wow. That's the bread aisle? Yeah, that's <laughs> the bread aisle. See, the motherfuckers ain't as prepared as they thought they were. Like the only the only bread out here is like hot dogs, hamburger buns, and then some bean giant. I have been so poor. I've had peanut butter jelly on a hot dog bun. I'm just saying, yeah. I've been there. I know what that's like. It's not yeah, bad. Was, didn't buy bread at all. We fucking made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, carbs are the enemy. Leave that shit alone. <laughs> okay. I agree. With that. <laughs> all right, guys. I don't know who that second Heather Clinkenbeard is. Who is that? Oh, it's me because I can only hear on one and I can see on the other. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so one's my eyes, one's my, my video. <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it. <laughs> it's called creative communication. It is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm not like squinting the whole time trying to like see your face. I get to see you on the big screen. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I'm out of here. All right, guys. Good night. Thank you Good all night. for joining in. Good night. Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful. Have a wonderful week, man. I hope you just enjoy the shit out of it. You too, Ryan. Okay. Bye bye.